everyone, I'm Maddie and welcome back to my channel. If you saw my last beekeeping video, then you'll know that mum and I recently took this amazing sheet of wax comb out of one of our natural hives. And I thought we could use it today to learn about the life cycle of a honeybee. In the wild, bees make their own wax to create this wax comb. All of these little hexagonal cells that connect together. And they have two jobs. The first is to store honey, and that will happen here at the top of the wax comb. But then if we move down here, the same cells are used to raise the brood. That's the baby bees. When we took this wax comb out of the natural hive, the bees had long gone. So I was quite surprised that when I took a closer look in inside some of these cells that they still had things inside them. So it seems that some of the bees that hadn't quite become fully grown adults were left behind in these cells. Which is an amazing opportunity for us because it means we can use my special microscope camera to look really closely inside these cells to see the different stages of the life cycle of a honeybee all for ourselves. So let's jump right in. Okay, all set up, ready to go. We've got our laptop, the special camera, our wax comb, and a couple of tools as well. What's good is my special camera is a handy dandy little torch too. So, what can we see? I'm just gonna try and get some focus. Whoa. Oh, wow. Ooh, what's that? Did you guys see like what looked like a little bug? Gosh, look at this guy. That is not a bee, that's just another little fly that's probably been caught in the sticky wax, the honey, or maybe even um, a spider's web. That is amazing. The life cycle of a honeybee goes through four basic stages. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. And inside a hive, you have three different types of bee. The majority of the bees are female workers. These are female bees who do all of the work. And then you have far, far fewer male drones. And the purpose of the drone is only to mate with the last type of bee, and that is the queen bee, of which there is only ever one. And the queen's job is to lay all of the eggs. In the spring, she can lay one egg every 20 seconds. That's 2,000 eggs a day. And this is where our life cycle starts. Now, of course, the first stage is the egg. So I'm looking for something that looks like a grain of rice. It's only about 1.7 millimeters long. And the queen, she lays it so it's almost standing upright inside the cell. It would be really lucky for us to actually find an egg in here, simply because the bees have long since gone and any eggs that were left behind would be um, a tasty treat for any other uh, little critters that might have come and had an explore around this wax cup. Home. Right, I might have found something. I don't know whether this is an egg or whether it's some kind of grub from another insect. But hang on, let me show you. Oh! Guys! That's some kind of little grub? A wax moth grub? Having done a bit of research, I'm pretty sure this is the lesser wax moth caterpillar and probably the reason all of the bees left in the first place because these caterpillars like to tunnel their way through the wax comb, eating it up as they go until eventually they'll spin themselves into a cocoon and transform into a wax moth. So I'm gonna leave that little guy alone now. Not an egg, but very cool nonetheless. Wow. After three days, the egg hatches into something called a larva, or larvae, if we're talking about lots of them. They're a snowy white colour, and they look like grubs curled up inside the cells. And at this stage, they grow pretty quickly, shedding their skin up to five times. I've had a good look, but I can't see any larva at all, but I can talk to you about them. Larva are very, very hungry. In fact, the nurse bees, um, those are the worker bees who look after the brood, the baby bees, they will feed each larva about 1,300 times a day. And they feed them two things. Uh, the first thing is something called royal jelly. And royal jelly is um, a white, oozy substance that comes out of a nurse bee's head. I know, that's kind of gross. And then the second thing they feed them is bee bread. And bee bread is a mixture of honey and pollen. After around six days, when the larvae have reached their full size, they start to spin themselves a cocoon out of 
thin, silk-like threads. It's kind of like a sleeping bag for a baby bee. And then the nurse bees will cap over the cell with a little bit more wax to keep them safe inside. And this is what we call the pupa stage. And it's when our juicy larva will transform into what we know as an adult bee. I can see already that a couple of these cells have been capped with wax, so it's possible we might be able to see this pupa stage for ourselves. So, wish us luck. I'm just going to use uh, my little brush here just to get rid of some of these little silk threads. And now I'm gonna try and lift off this wax cap. I'm just very carefully taking away the sides of these cell walls so we can see what's inside a little bit closer. And, whoa, <gasps> look at her, whoa. Now I'm calling her a her because she's quite small so I'm gonna assume that she is a female worker bee. But look at that. You can really see those hairs on her body, can't you? And the fact that she does have hairs suggests that she was in the very last few days, if not few hours of that pupa stage. So she was very nearly fully developed into an adult. So given a little bit more time, she would have moved into the final stage of the honeybee life cycle. And that is when she would have emerged from her cell and would have shaken off her wings and gone to join the rest of the colony. Because she does look pretty fully developed, I've got some tweezers here, so I'm going to take her out of the cell so we can see in close up what an adult bee looks like. I'm gonna be very, very, very careful. Ready? Oh my word. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna put her here, just on my little microscope plate so we can get a better look. <gasps> ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Looking at this girl under the microscope, she is incredible. We can really clearly see her eyes that are enormous. And look, we can see her little antenna, her legs, and then her abdomen, and what's blowing my mind is just how <laughs> how hairy she is. And the reason honeybees are hairy is that those little hairs help to trap pollen, um, which they pick up as they fly from flower to flower in search of nectar, which is really important for pollination. I wonder if we can get even closer to her eyeballs. Look at her eyeball! What's so amazing about this is that firstly, we can see that even a honeybee's eye is hairy to help trap that pollen. Yep, they have hairy eyes. But also, unlike us who have one eye, honeybees have compound eyes. So hundreds and hundreds of little tiny eyes that are all connected to each other and they all look in a slightly different direction and this gives them their sight. But if you go and check out our video, why is it so hard to catch a fly, which I will link just here, then you can learn more about compound eyes. But that's so exciting. So there you go guys, we might not have seen an egg or a larva, but we did see a wax moth grub and we could look inside a cell to see a bee just before it turned into a fully developed adult bee. I really hope you enjoyed this video, let me know what you thought of all that microscopic footage down in the comments below. Subscribe, stay curious and I'll see you soon. Bye!